Let's stand and, and do a prayer. And as we stand, visualize a star above your head as bright as the sun. In this light is all life, all love, all knowing. You are that star. You came from that star. That is your higher self. And as we build a bridge between heaven and earth together during this meditation, know that that star, that you are always connected. Heavenly Father, Divine Mother, Spirit of the Living God, We call to all the masters and angels of heaven, all the love beings across the universe that are here to help us. Thank you so much for this opportunity, this life, Touch each one, I pray, with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Quicken, enliven, and empower us to be your instruments of light here on earth. Beloved Archangel Michael, we ask your presence here now in full power, in full glory. Touch each one with your wings of love, your vision of God, the beauty of God. Help us in this meditation that we will go to a place of light and love that we came from that we will see it that we will feel it that we will know it we come looking for God take us there Again, just a few meditation tips before we start. In all of us is an eye that can look right into heaven. To do that, we have to close our eyes to this world reach up with our heart with our love to the spiritual eye between the eyebrows and using our will to remain perfectly still perfectly focused to 
to allow God to sh reveal to you his presence. Sometimes we feel it as peace. Sometimes we feel it as love. Sometimes we see it as light. Sometimes we hear the voice of God as the Om and other divine musical sounds that are playing in heaven like sacred music. These manifestations are reflections of heaven. To get there, we slow down the mind, we still the body, and then in this group, we can co-create a divine atmosphere. And sometimes you can repeat something like, reveal thyself, heavenly father, divine mother. Or sometimes you can just say what is ever in your heart to the Father, Mother, God, who is always listening. And is anxious for us to be in a place where he can communicate with us. So let's all with, meditate with all of our mind and all of our heart in our entire being. Every chakra, every erg of energy within your being is at your command. Now is the time to have that vision. Now is the time to have that experience. The masters and the angels are here. For a few minutes, let's go deep, deep into the silence and stillness.
So for a few more minutes, let's keep our eyes closed. But just notice that we are in these bodies again. That in a blink of an eye, 20 minutes went by. We were in a timeless place. We stepped out of this world and into a, another dimension we're here now the masters and the angels are still here We're going to do a little experiment here. We're going to send Archangel Michael on a mission. Somebody, or maybe yourself, ask him do something to help someone and in this sacred energy in this bridge of light between heaven and earth that we built these prayers will be answered keep track of it So now I'll give you a few moments to just gather what is, what if you can ask Archangel Michael to do something, what would you ask him? Pray this prayer, speak it out of your Christ center or the place between your eyebrows. Speak it with your heart. Into the middle of this room and above us. And there are billions of angels, and they hear every prayer. And nothing is impossible. And now we're going to send a billion angels around the world to answer those prayers and also invite them to answer all of mankind's prayers for peace, for love, for brotherhood and sisterhood. especially where there are wars on earth in the Middle East and in North Korea. We 
we pray that the peace angels come also, along with the warrior angels, the blue flame angels, to earth. Let's chant Om together one time. And just know that it is your God flame that is giving these angels permission to come to, have, come to earth from heaven to make this come to pass. Om. And lastly, for our families, for our grandchildren, for our cousins, our nieces, our nephews, everybody going back to the beginning of time and going forward till the end of time, may they all be touched by the angels. Thank you, beloved Archangel Michael and all the angels and masters, beings of light and love that were here during this beautiful meditation. Welcome everybody online. The Heart Center is a worldwide movement of spiritual seekers and finders committed to realizing self-transformation using the up transformation and sharing up-to-the-date teachings of the Ascended Master Sue David Christopher Lewis, our co-founder, spiritual teacher, and living messenger. The Heart Center goals are, we realize personal enlightenment through our higher God Self and share the teachings of the Masters East and West. We help the universal brotherhood and sisterhood of light raise our planet in love and joy. Our vision is that we live in sustainable golden crystal age communities in joy and in harmony with Mother Nature using solar sciences of the spirit. We radiate light and we live and love as one. So the Heart Center is, uh, is a movement, meaning it's growing and changing and evolving as new information of the masters are being released to mankind and we discover beautiful teachings from other saints, sages around the world. And we incorporate those, anything that works to find God, to bring you closer to heaven, um, spiritual truth, wherever it is, in goodness and in love and joy. So, last week we had Richard. He was a wonderful questioner, and I don't think we even scratched the surface of some of the questions that he had. And so, I'm so glad that you came back, and uh, we have Phineas here today to share also, uh, help with any kind of questions that you have, and you probably had a week to think about some things. So. If you'd like to continue with any kind of questioning you're about uh, meditation or anything else you what's on your heart, we're welcome to continue that. It's fun for us. The question I have right now is. Um, 
when we meditate, there is energy that's coming out of, of a thought. Now, where does a thought and energy go? And then how do we connect that way with the universal power? Do I make any sense sir, with that question? We're elimi we are exerting thoughts, right? Or do you com be completely quiet? Or so I'm a little bit confused about that. I'll take this one and then pass it around the room. There are many different types of meditation. I. For myself, sometimes I will I will repeat a repeat a prayer, and the prayer is like a formula that the masters or the gurus or the avatars, the ones that have connected with God, have given mankind. And these prayers, um, these formulas, bring energy or connect you. Uh, either mentally or emotionally or spiritually with the higher self. Now, there is a meditation where you, there, you go beyond the thoughts. Um, thoughts are a tricky thing. Uh, it's, it's like a television. You can change the stations. You could have a good station and you can have a bad station. Uh, negative thoughts. Uh, any kind of... But how do you get to a place of peace and clarity? So um, there's, uh, it's mind control, I would say, where you stop the thoughts. You use your mind power to, and command it using your soul power, which is your will, to stop the mind from thinking. And then in that stillness, in that and that place in between the thoughts, beautiful things, beautiful visions happen, beautiful, um, a place that is an eternal, that's, that's, the, that's the door to the eternal place. And I know Boris has got some more to say about that. Not sure if you were able to connect with the meditations that are happening right now with uh, Deepak Chopra and Opera, and they have a centering thought for each meditation. So, for instance, uh, on the day six, the the thought was, uh, "My true self is inspired and wise." Om Aim Namah. So there is like different thoughts that you c c can concentrate on. So wherever the t you're concentrating your thought, that's where energy goes. Always energy goes after the thought. So whether it's positive or negative, the energy always goes with the thought. But the aim of meditation is uh, to really release uh, thoughts and basically be like have more gaps, as, as Dennis was saying, have more space. That's where the magic happens is in the gap between the thoughts. So the more space you have between the thoughts, the more meditation you're doing. You're really feeling that presence. But when you see that too many thoughts are happening, you can either concentrate on the breath or on the mantra that can go you, put you back in presence. So it's good to have positive thoughts. So meditation can be meditation on a positive thought, like God is love, or you can just concentrate on your breath and just have more space and be observing and eventually you want to have more space. So if you concentrate on your breath then... Then you're, you're not concentrating on the thoughts. You're really concentrated on no, no thoughts at all. And then peace will come. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so yeah, you're getting it. While we're on that subject though, yes. We have a room here full of powerful souls. Now, be very honest with you, I'm concerned for all of us, for the world, with the North Korean subject. 
And if we as a group could put together a thought for a minute and just think that everything will be working out with love and peace, would that help? I am very concerned, God, about the direction this world is going to. I've been, I am a um, prisoner of war. I've been in a country concentration camp, so I know, I know what it's all about. That's bad. But now with... Um, uh, atomic bombs and so on, it could be a hundred, a thousand times worse. So therefore we ask that we won't be put to that brink, Lord. We here in this room will start putting out these prayers and thoughts that and love for all the people involved that they're making the wise decisions and America and the world will go back to these peaceful ways that we are accustomed to. We've had Although we had some war, small wars in the past 60, 70 years, but it was not a world war. That's it's very, very bad. It was, I have experienced it. So, dear God, I'm asking you for all of us here in this group to send out thoughts for peace and love. And if this won't happen, and the world will continue what we are doing right now. Next time, when you try to meditate and create something like that, just ignore all the different things that you know in your mind that are going wrong and what's wrong in the world. Because when you're saying what's wrong, you're putting more energy into that wrong thing. So the moment where you were saying those different things, I didn't want to support that because basically I'm supporting those thoughts. Uh, so so basically you want to concentrate on the positive last time I was telling you. So you want to just say that there will be peace and love in North Korea. And let everybody just have that thought form and just meditate on that. Well, I'll do it very simply. So let there be peace and love and light and joy in North Korea. Let all the people experience that love and peace and what is to hug and be joyful. Let that be God. Fill that country with a lot of light that will disperse all dark energies and people will feel happy and blessed. Thank you, God. Thank you. simple as that. doesn't need to be very complicated with a lot of words. It can be just one thought and just let, let that feeling, just say it with a feeling and just hold that feeling in your heart. Uh, here I am. I'm not really in charge, okay, so can I hand this mic? No, no, you know what? I have one more question. Okay. 
The question I have, I have so many questions because I'm an infidel. I don't know, okay? I don't have any questions. <laughs> I'm an infidel, I'm not from the Middle East, okay? From, I don't mean it that way. I just want to make sure I'm... So, what, what I want to know is... How can it get ourselves into a higher level of consciousness? How can we ramp up that positive, good thought energy supported by angels and by the masters and really ramp that up? That's the question I've had for the longest time. Yes, sir. We, we, I think we all become um, somehow our, our teachers of ourselves, even to the, the even the most sage among us. You know, we we, we can learn from children. <laughs> we can learn from the behavior of our animals. Um, it's it's actually starts simply with a desire or intent, the intent, and um, and one of the ways to do that is even before you open your eyes. Uh, I, I, I like to give credit to, to where I hear these ideas the first time. I was reading this um, amazing book by Pamela Grout, and she's authored a few uh, wonderful books. One of them is called E Squared. But I think this book was called Think and Grow Rich. And it was about setting the dynamic for your day even before you open your eyes and certainly before you look at your cell phone, you know? Because <laughs> you, you don't want to ingest any of that energy <laughs> before you start your day. And it... <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right. Don't even have it in your bedroom, right? If you can. But the whole idea is about literally setting in your mind or even saying the words, this is going to be an amazing day. This is going to be a day full of joy. This is going to be a day when I manifest amazing things, even on the small day. In fact, and this is the other thing that she, she talked about, is this idea of expectation, of setting the expectation. And this is, I'm going to manifest somehow three miraculous things today, you know? And the interesting thing is that when you set goals like that, if you hit two, you'll know it. <laughs> if you hit one, you'll know it. And the other part is that maybe if the first part of your day is so miraculous, you don't still have, <laughs> you know, it's like, oh my God, the rest of my day is not going to, no, no, you're going to have three, three days. So, so simply by setting the intent, the positive intent, that somehow this day is going to be joyful. Somehow today I'm going to contribute to the milieu, whatever it is, the energy of the world. And you know what? By doing that before you even, you know, uh, even wash your face or set your foot on the ground, somehow it's almost as if the angels all rush to you. They, as as you know, um, as was mentioned a little earlier, they're listening intently. They're waiting. They're waiting for you you to act. They need that impulse from us. They need that energy from us. And and then they just all flow to you. It's almost like um, you think about what happens when you have a cut. Um, biologically, what happens when you have a cut, um, and you have all of this, um, all of these uh, T cells and everything, and um, all of these uh, cells that go rush to repair. But it's 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 similar to that, except it's a more of a positive thing in the sense that you have asked for this wonderful thing. You've asked for miracles. You've asked for happiness. You've asked for joy, which by by way, by the way is your birthright. You know, it's it's a given. That's what that's what God. That's what Source. That's what the angels want for us to have joy, to live joyfully. So then, when we ask for it and we say, then this is my part of my my plan for today, that actually sets that thing in motion. So it, it in, in a way, 
and it's almost as if sometimes you're going through the day and I had a really beautiful experience today um, because I had done that this morning. I had done that this morning before getting up, but I was still having this like little, uh, I don't know, I, I had, you know, sometimes you have a little, little cloud over your head. He's like, why is the cloud following me, right? <laughs> why do I feel, and guess what? The reason that we have all of these wonderful people around us is for us to reach out to them and touch them and to touch into their energy. And sometimes those other people around you, like us, will be able to kind of turn your day, you know, help turn your day around. Sometimes you need a little help. Don't, don't, don't think that just because you called and, you know, you know, it, the, the heavens did, the, you know, didn't open up and, you know, they didn't see the hand of God come down. <laughs> <laughs> a tray of delicacies doesn't mean that it's not working. <laughs> yeah. very strong mind and I can just about manifest something and get it I came in this country been a millionaire lost it and then got married got divorced and all that now I got a, now I do have the prettiest woman on earth Helen it's my wife so I got everything I asked for okay now what 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 my question to any one of you is our brain is a computer and I think you verified this just a minute ago. Don't say anything negative because that be put that's the wrong app that you put out there. And it's good. That's not the wrong app. There's a computer out there. So the question I have, very serious question, is I'm looking for someone to put a program in my brain computer that will help me get into this quagmire called humanity and move it forward. Who can answer that? So the question is, is, is there a program that you can put in your brain that will help you um, become the Christ, become... Not necessarily Christ, but... Uh, and, and compare something. Well, I think... Didn't we all say we could be Christ-like? Yes, so yes. I don't want to say, yeah, I'd like to do things Christ-like. Okay, and I'm not... But uh, far, hear me out. I'm not blaming on Christ, okay? But, well, my wife wants some kind of things I am. <laughs> Sons of God, sons and daughters of God. Well, it's all energy. The masters have said, Yogananda has said that the mind is like a horse. It wants to run wild and, and not focus and go hither dither. But there are affirmations that you can repeat to gain control of the mind. The mind wants to also criticize, condemn, and, and generally is very negative. But there is a mind that is higher than the physical brain. It's in the heart. It's called uh, uh, bodhicitta or heart wisdom, this heart mind. And so the masters have talked about how to meditate on the heart to reach the heart mind or the bodhicitta. And so from there, that mind poetry will come, music will come, uh, divine ideas will come. Now the mind 
the monkey mind, we call it, uh, is the just uh, like it gets, you know, we see information, we hear information, we feel information, and it all gets stored in here. But the that mind, that is, or the lower mind, is the source or the veil that prevents us from really finding our Christ mind, our, the, the mind that reflects back the love and the joy that is inherent in, in our God self. So to simply say the programs that the masters have written for us are these little divine formulas. Some of them are in this book. And it's uh, first the first step is to recognize if the information is coming from the the Christ mind or if it's coming from the monkey mind. And if it's negative, you know it's coming from the mind that just is, you know, comparing and contrasting and not in tune with the higher frequencies of, of the heaven worlds. The ego mind. What's in it for me, Boris says, very well he said. So, but, so these affirmations that you can repeat over and over again uh, gives you, your, gives, it's, it's how you gain control of the mind. You're telling the mind to do something. You're commanding the mind to do something instead of letting it like a horse run wherever it wants to run. So after a while that will power gets stronger and stronger and stronger in your by repeating it because you're commanding the mind to be to do it what you tell you to do. Uh, there's other ways to develop your willpower like uh, com controlling the body, fasting. When you tell the body you are going to fast, the body, uh, which is connected to the mind, the physical body, physical mind, it doesn't like that. But your spirit, your, the spirit of God, the will in you, the will in you is actually God. The will in you is commanding the body to do something. And when you go through it, all of a sudden that will muscle becomes stronger. And when you, re when you repeat those affirmations, you know, of the masters, your mind is having to be obedient for the first time in its life. The body doesn't want to be still and the mind doesn't want to be still. And so when you start commanding those things to be still, there's a muscle that is developing, a spiritual muscle. Now, to get to a place where you can manifest out of the universal, a diamond, a piece of gold, an apple, or anything. Uh, there are books that the masters have, uh, people have written that talk about that in the Ascended Master books. Uh, one is called Unveiled Mysteries. And that book talks about how every time you say the word I am, it should always be followed by something uh, positive. And that is when you start to gain control of the universal energies that God has given you as a son of God. Uh, I guess in the world, in this world, we're told that we are all sinners. And so, and most reli or, or some of our Christian religions tell us that's, that's it. The ascended masters say, no, you are a son of God. Focus on that. Don't focus on any mistake that you made in the, in, in the uh, past. You focus on that your true nature, your true self, is cr this image, this essence of God that came and took this body. And we focus on that, and the energy is much better, uh, is easier to reconnect with, uh, with your divine source, instead of focusing on the negative, which is the sinner or the whatever. So this new technique of, of, of affirmation is always saying, I am light, I am love, I am joy. And no matter what the mind says, you say, uh, you know, I am not believing the mind, I'm not listening to the thoughts, I'm going beyond that, I'm using my spirit, my soul, to command my mind and my body to do these things that I know 
intuitively is the truth, is the absolute truth. I have a question on that one. Okay. I will uh, let you answer that question, and then, and then Boris has got some more. Well, you have to answer the question. <laughs> so you mentioned the heart, mind. I've heard something like that, and I didn't quite understand the heart, mind. So does the heart have a mind? And if it does, I've never heard anything from the heart to give me instructions I've gotten from my, from my mind, yes. <laughs> well, the way, the way that I see it is our heart leads us, if we listen, our heart will lead us where we need to go. But we use our head as a tool for the heart. The, the, the brain works for the heart, um, in my world <laughs> anyway. So it's just like you cannot make your arm move or you cannot pick up that apple with your heart. Your brain has to tell your body to do that. It's an app for your computer, like you say. But uh, many people forget about the heart and just use the brain and the horse runs wild. So as you raise your vibration, your heart becomes more, you feel the heat in your body. In your heart chakra, it will get hot because it's being, it's very active. Meditation. <laughs> Meditation will raise your vibration. When you wake up in the morning, like Phineas was mentioning, and that's the perfect time to connect because your vibration is up. Your natural, without your brain getting in the way, your heart will raise the vibration. I think you're closer, probably closer to that alpha state, you know, that, yeah, that angelic state. Yeah. It has to do with your heart being in control. Like this is you in the normal state. You're in your, your um, super conscious. You're not in your conscious mind when you're sleeping. So you turn your brain off and your heart takes over. That's how I see it. Yeah. It, your vibration is much higher. You're in connection with the masters with spirit so that's the perfect time to do all of this work when you wake up or right when you're going to sleep and right when you when you're waking up between sleep and awake moments that's called the alpha state and that is when you're connected to both worlds so it's a beautiful time you're using your brain but your heart is in control and you can feel how that works. So that's a good practice. The heart is connection to the source, the eternal God. That's the intuition where it happens. So basically when you connect to the heart, you're connecting to the whole universe and things that your brain, there's no way it will know. You just know it with your heart that is going to work. And even though your brain that says, oh, that's never going to work. Or sometimes your brain thinks it's going to work, but your heart feels like in a like, like constriction. That means it's not going to work out. And many times when you didn't listen to the heart, that's what happens. So it's very important to learn to listen to your intuition, to your heart. So that's a big one. There was Deepak Chopra interviewing one of the best uh, managers of Sony, and he was always making the best deals. And he was asking, how do you do it? You're always, you're doing always the right thing. He said, even if it looks good, I feel what is the expansion in my, in my area here around the, you know, the solar plexus. If it feels expanding and calm, I go with it. If it feels constricted or some energy that doesn't feel right, even though it looks right on the numbers or whatever, I never go with it. And sometimes if it doesn't look good, but it feels good expanding, I take the risk and it turns out like an amazing success. So he's just listening to the intuition, to the heart. 
So this is something that you have to be become more aware and fine tune so you become more accurate. Uh, but this is a skill that you can develop. Usually the women, they have it better because they're more intuitive, but men can develop that too. And also to raise the energy, you can use different techniques with meditation is one. Singing a song is super powerful, tuning higher up. So actually singing a, a prayer in, in meditation, I mean singing a prayer in a song is even more powerful than, than just a prayer by saying in words. Uh, another way is like there's a frankincense essential oil. It right away it reaches you to like one million, like very very powerful uh, energy, high energy. It will get you going. So this, uh, the quotation Listen to your heart. Listen to your heart. <laughs> yeah. You listen to your heart by being quiet. Yes. And it starts talking. You just feel it. Everything in, in, in this life is really uh, about oneness, but there's a, a kind of a dichotomy in, 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 our, in our world, in our plane that we live in, and that dichotomy is usually something between love and fear, you know, um, love and fear, love and fear, and, and when we do something out of fear, that's probably not the heart truck we're talking to you, <laughs> but, but if you do it out of, out of love, that is definitely the direction of the heart. That's the direction of the heart. So that that's a kind of interesting way to kind of think about these kind of decisions. You know, if it doesn't, you know, it's like sometimes we don't don't do things with the correct intent. <laughs> you know, and our hearts go. Oh. You don't feel it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right because the intent isn't there. The, the, the you know the true intent is in there, and the true intent. I, I think um, I think Source and the angels are always telling us what our truest intents are, <laughs> you know, always reminding us, if you will, and, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Well, yeah, because sometimes if you've been told no on something, it becomes a challenge to make it happen, and that's more the ego working than the heart working. And if you don't, you have to turn that off, not not worry about it. Well, you think about it before you, when they, someone says no or something can't be done, you don't all of a, oh, I'm going to show them. You know, you think about it, well, am I going to show them because it's something good for them or is it just because I want to show them because I can do it you know there's a difference there so you have to think before you act and and think am I doing this somebody said it before am I doing this for the good of the of the person myself everybody involved or am I doing this to show someone that I can do it and so that's that's your ego I, I think, yeah. That, that energy always burns out before you get anything accomplished. <laughs> right. So it's a matter of before you take, you bulldozer your way through something, you stop and think, am I doing this for the betterment of whatever the situation is? Is it, or am I doing it just to prove that I can do it? Are you, are you already burned in me now? A little bit. <laughs> He has. He's done very well. Just sometimes he needs to stop and think first. That's all. And uh, and I really enjoyed, I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Oh, Phineas. Phineas, I really enjoyed what you said earlier. I had to hear that because sometimes, like you said, no matter what you do, there's still that cloud. Yeah. <laughs> and and there's days like that. And I've had my cloud all day, and I'm thinking, why? I'm, I read my books. I do everything I'm supposed to. Why? Why? And then I just feel like, you know what? I just want to give up. Just just not be here anymore, you know? So it was good to hear it. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Again. <laughs> Plug into a good source, right? <laughs> a positive source. Yeah. And, uh,
Can I just add I one thing? So, and yeah. one thing that really is good. Yeah, music is wonderful. That gets you into a, a, a quiet and peaceful place. But um, um, writing down, journaling your thoughts, your wishes, your mantras, and what results you've gotten from it, how it's working. It really, because we forget. We forget this, and we, when we go back to it, it's like, oh my goodness, that really <coughs> happened. You know, that did work. That was wonderful. I'm going to do that again. What, what energy transpires when we write things down? What happens? Well, it's, for, for, I'm, but that does happen. I, I do writing. I write messages from spirit a lot, <laughs> and they're wonderful, and they're very prophetic, but... That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about journaling. I'm talking about when you get some, some inspiration, write it down. Mm -hmm. And then use that as your mantra when you meditate or when you wake up in the morning. And see what happens. And then write that down. Or even you can just write all the thoughts that come to you right now. You can see your thoughts on paper. And <laughs> you'll be like, <laughs> did I actually thought that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really yeah. Because yeah. your thoughts will vary depending on if you're in your heart or in your head. You know, this <laughs> is called synchronicity. Yes. My wife has been preaching about this the last several days. So she, it looks like she talked to the both of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just amazing how the universe works. You know, I mean, uh, she's been wanting me to do that. And I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And now there are two people <laughs> confirming it. And it's, it's almost a little scary. Ooh. <laughs> Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. Uh, not really, right? Yeah. Okay. They happen whenever you, um, when you need them the most. That's when you when you see the signs. You know, S sometimes the angels will just drop something on you. It's like you know, and you and you and you talk about it with someone. It's like, oh yeah, they were just they're just like trying to let you know that uh, God is with you. You're fine. You're on your path. You 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 you're walking the path that you are meant to walk. So you get an affirmation somewhere. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, 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 and. All so many ways, you know. Sometimes it'll be a color. Sometimes it'll be a number, you know, or a series of numbers that you see repeated. Yeah. You know. You know, tonight I was supposed to go to a different meeting. At five o'clock, a thought came to me: Don't go. Yeah, I was go to an, another meeting, and I, that I planned a couple of months ago. And a thought came to in my head from out of the blue sky, out of nowhere. Don't go, go with Helen to the meeting tonight. And I'm so glad that I got so much more from all of you here. And I hope you got the same thing from what we got out of this conversation. It, it really has uh, helped me a lot. With uh, I don't think I'll get an apple if I ask for it just yet. But what is important, what we talked about, the heart. I didn't know that, and the affirmations. Now, you show is it a little book that you have that, with affirmations or? It, yes. I have a couple of affirmation books. One is a, a gift from Boris. This is one is called Prayers and Songs. And Thinius, you know, he opened this up and a couple of weeks ago, and just the the perfect thing just came. So many times you could just open this book and. It's like a magic, you know, you read it and you, the synchronicity of it. Uh, Yogananda has some beautiful affirmations and it's called just affirmations. And they have them at the Self-Realization Fellowship. We have some books 
over on the table over there. One is called um, Zen Here and Now. And those kind of uh, questions, the way the Zen approaches the mind, it, 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 puts, the, it puts the mind in kind of like in an unstable, you know, it can't really make sense of what's the sound of one hand clapping you know it just and then but there's an inner meaning to it you know there's some sort of a there's a key in there that kind of like connects with a, a, an idea that came from god that can only be explained in the most metaphysical terms you know that and sometimes can even be explained so the affirmations are a way of reprogramming the mind. You can uh, also put your hand on your heart and do your uh, prayers or whatever in the morning. Uh, like Phineas was saying, and I learned this, and I'm going to try this tomorrow morning, is before I, when I wake up, before I open my eyes, I'm going to, I'm going to ask for uh, God's, intercession and the angels intercession especially Archangel Michael and I'm going to make a, a, a little list of things that I want to manifest because we are co-creators with God and when you speak it out loud it gives it more reality when you sing it out loud <laughs> it gives it extra power because singing is what the angels do and, and, and that puts joy in your heart into it uh, when you think it too is a way of, of getting the ball rolling. So a way you, uh, when you want to be a manifester, when you want to be a creator, whether it's business, whether it's love, whether it's uh, blessing the earth, there are there are all these tools that you can use. To yeah, there are all all tools in the in the uh, light workers toolbox. Affirmations, mantras, singing, uh, dancing, uh, the right food. Uh, there are certain oils called essential oils that are distilled light virtually from the sun. Uh, Boris, is, uh, he's a, a distributor for this, this very high quality uh, oil. I have some healing oils up there that are frankincense and rose oil and, and, that I use. Um, those are these are all things you know like if you have a cloud over your head or something you're feeling like there's a burden around you you stop you close your eyes you connect with God and you ask that Archangel Michael clear with his blue flame sword any negative energy that seems to be surrounding you demand it you command it in the name of the Christ it will happen so the the call compels the answer uh, the the masters and the angels are under this rule in this universe that they are not allowed to interfere with our lives unless invited. So that is the rule. So we have to pray, we have to ask, and uh, we have to knock on that door, as Jesus said. Ask and you shall receive. So the masters have said the same things over and over again in different ways. But those are all tools. You just keep those in your toolbox. And when it comes, when, when, when a challenge comes, it might be a challenge or it might be something to make you stronger. Now, you know, you have to be stronger because you have to meet that challenge. And so you have to go into your soul, which has all the answers, and then, and then the, your soul will come up and give you an answer, take you to the right place where, you know, the... Maybe there'll be people there. More than you can bear. So always give enough so you can bear it. You're not ever going to give more than you can. That if they are giving it to you, that means you can bear it. And the higher yes. you grow, the more things they'll give you. <laughs> I just want to say that. Um, thank you. Uh, there are no rules to meditating. Everything you've heard here tonight is to help you refine your meditation to help make it uh, more productive, basically. But anybody, I mean, I used to think, I don't have time to meditate, but I would do dishes every night, and my mind would go off to this 
place and I don't know how the dishes got done. But suddenly the dishes were washed and I felt better. Um, there are many things that we do during the day that are repetitious that we could do with our eyes closed. And we are in that state, that alpha state, while we do it. So there is no wrong way. It's just that there are many right ways. So don't feel like I'm making a mistake or I don't know how to do it. Or maybe I can't remember exactly what they said. Once you start doing it, then you'll pick up. Boris will tell you all kinds of refinements to make it wonderful. When Boris was, uh, followed you in the meditation, the, the prayer, I felt so much energy coming from him. So he's a very good person to, to, to work with. Yeah. 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 But, but if, you're, if you're meditating without fear, without concern for doing anything wrong, your ego's going to go away. Your ego doesn't have a, a job there. So it, it, it's going to, you know, stay away. <laughs> I just wanted to say something that's really important. If you want to preserve energy and actually create more energy in yourself and vitality, you want to have the unity between the mind, the heart, and the will. So basically the thoughts, what you're thinking, and what you're feeling, and what you're doing has to be one. Let's say if you're washing dishes, if your mind is thinking about one thing and your, and your heart is like, oh, I don't want to be doing this or I feel really bad about it, and you're actually doing it, that's actually depleting your energy big time. But if your heart, like, you're, oh, I feel like so good, I'm really doing this, and I'm really connecting uh, with my thought, it's like, really, I want to do a perfect job, like, really concentrate every single bit, like, the Buddhist, um, you know, monks, they will just go inch by inch, will scrub the foil, will make the most perfect job ever, but that's meditation. Because you, your mind, and actually they can do it for hours and hours, they won't get tired, because they're 100% present. So it's very important, whatever you're doing, give 100% focus between your mind, your heart, and you're actually doing what you're doing, the will. So the three things go together. That's big thing, huge. And then you can not be tired at all during the day. If you're doing, let's say, some computer work, you can be have your mind, your heart you're doing it, and you're actually doing whatever you're doing with the mouse or with the keyboard, you're 100% there. Then you're talking to somebody. You're not just halfway there. You just give the 100% attention, engaged, focus. Is it so much connected to the Trinity? It's, it is Trinity, yes. We have the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and so all together, yeah. It is, it's all three, yeah. It's always three. Like you have an, in an egg, you can have the shell, you have the yolk, uh, and, and you have, you know, the, uh, the, what is the? The white. The white. <laughs> yeah, the white is, is the soul, and then, then there is the, the yolk, the, the, the spark where the new life is going to get born as the spirit. So in everything, in, in, in the tree, you have the outside, you have the inner soul, and then the fruits. So there's always, in every single bit, you, we can see the trinity. In every aspect, in the apple, and everywhere. In, yeah, so, so it's, it just be, be aware of what's happening. Wha once you see it one place, you'll be able to see it everywhere. Like a friend of mine yesterday on the Bulgarian meeting was telling me, oh, I'm studying in a national university, uh, some cyber security or whatever. And I, I have passed so many times on the way to my dentist friend, and I never seen that there was a national university there. Now that he was taking, tol telling me about this, I think it just came out, wow, that's it in so many places, you know. But I was always not noticing it because I never was not aware about it. Once you're aware about it, then you'll be able to see it everywhere. So what do you want to see? Like, like, do you want to see more love? What do you want to see more preciousness? And whatever your attention is, that's what you're going to attract and you're going to have more of that in your life. So it's very important how you want to start the day with happy, 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 just start smiling. That Let's start the day consciously. That's what there was actually a disciple of the master Bin Saduno that he was a very good uh, herbalist and like 
amazing person and he was always teaching people you start the day with happy let's start the day consciously and that means that means happy and you start actually start uh, going in the bed and just happy happy vessel 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 means joyful 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 and just keep just goes like that and then he starts the day so that's like a good start of the day if you start like this you're gonna have a really nice day it's not like whoa what i'm gonna do today or oh, so many things i have to do or whatever just start with happy <laughs> Yeah, just look for whatever. Just just be concentrated in with your mind and your heart and your will, and and you're not gonna feel like uh, any, any job won't feel uh, you're not gonna get tired of any job because you're so present in it, and you're not wasting any energy. You get tired when you get your energy is de being depleted, and if you're actually gaining energy, actually you're gaining energy when you're three things are together, you're actually accumulating energy. So by washing the dishes, you're going to actually accumulate energy. Yeah. That's huge. So what happens? Okay, I'm going to close with this. With all that great energy from all of you, and, and I've never had so much inspiration in one night, and I want to thank you all of that, and I want to thank the universe. But if you see me walk out, and you don't see my feet mo move, I'm walking on a cloud, okay? <laughs> and thank you for the night. You mean you're close to no, I'm not close to it. I'm just... okay. Well, let's, let's just stand and um, we'll close this session. Heavenly Father, Divine Mother, Spirit of the Living God, Blessed Holy Spirit, come, Holy Spirit, come. Touch each one, I pray, with thy wisdom, thy inner guidance, thy miracles show each of us the higher way the loving way of the Christ of the Buddha of the angels and the masters as they exemplify the perfected man and woman. We thank you, beloved Archangel Michael, for coming here tonight. And I know good things will be happening, that your angels are now actively busy on the earth helping bringing peace, bringing freedom to places like North Korea, Syria, and places where darkness and evil. Thank you for helping us. Amen. So there's some snacks there. Make yourself at home with some water. There's some little...